Côte d'Ivoire. And please. Okay, um, look, I've never been to a shrink before, you know? I'm sorry. <laughs> I study English in a university, but I am new to your country. What does a shrink mean? Shrink is a nickname for a psychiatrist, you know? Short for head shrinker because you work with people's heads. Ah, interesting. Okay, so what is your problem? Well, I don't even know where to start. Work was the only happily decent thing in my life, and then yesterday I got canned. It's just like out of nowhere. I'm sorry, you got canned like a can of soup. Someone gave you a can of soup? No, no, I got fired. Oh, you were burned? I'm a doctor, but this is not my area. No, no, I didn't catch on fire. My boss told me to hit the bricks. Wait! I'm out of work. Your boss hit you with bricks? No! He told me I no longer have a job, my life is falling apart, and basically, I'm at the end of my rope. Oh, and you cannot buy more rope because you have no job. No! Look, what I'm saying is, I'm miserable. I don't have a job, and on top of that, I just dumped my girlfriend. Wait, you put your girlfriend in a dump? No! I, I left her. I, I told her I didn't want to see her anymore just because she wouldn't pass second base with me. Second base is like a sexual metaphor for baseball, which is a sport with, where they have three bases in a home play. First base is like kissing, second base is like touching. I can't even remember if it was over the clothes or under the clothes. Third base is like <laughs> Wait, let's go back. You let your boss hit you with bricks? No, 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 no. It's just, it's just a stupid little expression to express something stupid. Do I have to explain to you what an expression is? No, 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 no. In my country, we have expressions too. One such expression is, if the apple is red, the boy who bites it will taste the juices of a future love. And if the apple is green, the so boy who bites it will taste the bitterness of jealousy later in life. And if the apple is yellow... I don't care about your apples! I'm here to talk about my problems. Okay. So, what you are saying is, you are depressed because you did not like the can of soup your boss gave you, and you put your girlfriend in a dump because she tried to kiss you on second base. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. Ah, yes. Feel better now? Perfect. How much do I owe you? A hundred big ones. I'll mail it to you. Oh, and don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. Leonard, is it? Yes. What seems to be the problem, Leonard? Oh, well, no, it's not me, Doctor. It's my, uh, friend. Okay, so what's the matter with your friend? I think he's having trouble with his sexuality. He feels like he's a woman trapped in a man's body. Don't worry, I understand. Pauline. Pauline. That's the woman who's trapped. He might be talking about gender realignment surgery. Well, there's a problem with that. Really? But you see, Pauline isn't quite sure about her sexuality either. Well, she shouldn't be. She's trapped inside of you. I, I mean, your friend. No, I mean, there's a man trapped inside of her. What? Alan. Alan. Alan is trapped inside of Pauline. Okay, let me get this straight. Your friend is a woman trapped inside of a man's body. Yes. But there's a man trapped inside a woman's body. Exactly. So that would mean a gender realignment surgery for your friend to become Pauline, then another one to become Alan. Uh, that sounds messy. Okay, here's a thought. Why kill two birds with one stone if your friend just stayed as they were? Oh no, Jackie would never put up with that. Jackie? She's the woman trapped inside of Alan, and she doesn't quite get along with Pauline. Hmm. Your friend sounds very confused. 
Does he have any family members he can talk to? Well, no, no, not really. I mean, he's got me and the cat. Sure, it's not a dog trapped inside the cat's body. Pardon? This friend of yours, it's you, isn't it? No, it's not. It's my roommate. It is, honest. So why did you bring your roommate here? I did. He's in the bag. Well, I have a sense of humor about it. You see, I feel that every day if I use the word in my practice, soon it will lose its meaning, and soon it will lose its power as a derogatory term. Oh. Just look at his hunky guy, how can he be a shrink? Just look at his hunky guy, I wonder what he's thinking right now. Wow, there it is, huh? the singing you told me about earlier over the phone. Oh my god, I was singing? Yes, you were. That's why I came to see you. When I get nervous, I just sing. And I don't even remember it happening because I just blocked the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do you even remember how old you were when this first started? Do my ears deceive me? Or have I really found a man with interest in me The one that makes my heart pound Look at his eyes looking right through me I wonder if he wants to do me uh, Interesting Oh my god, I'm so sorry uh, No, no, th th there's nothing to be ashamed of and Now you know that everyone has a mechanism that deals with stress and nervousness. Yeah, but most people's are a little bit more quiet. Not really. I have a patient that barks. <laughs> uh, like a dog? <laughs> yes, exactly. Not like a big mean dog, it's more like a little yuppie dog. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> uh, are you even allowed to tell me this if it's a patient? Well, ethically, it's not good. Oh. oh. Speaking of does, if I were a poodle, I cling to his leg like a wet noodle. Oh, what would I give for him to do me this way style? But I couldn't live if he thought I was foul. I want him and me. Bad, bad, bad doggy. <coughs> All right, um, I, I have an idea, okay? Let, let's just do an exercise, all right? And this might isolate the moment that triggers your singing, okay? Okay, just tell me what to do. All right, um, let's just do a word association. Um, I'll say a word, and you'll say the first thing that pops into your head, and we'll start with orange. It's on the drop. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> all right, um, fish. Taco. I had a bad one once in Mexico and it was such a bad scene that I even found Alright, alright, let's just keep your answers to one or two words Yeah, alright, okay Alright, um, door Open Book Story Hmm Men Hunger Doctor? Ooh. Mutual attraction? Oh dear God, why did you give him both? That body and hypocritic, oh. Oh, I pray upon the trinity. 
virginity. Daddy takes my virginity. Oh, I know it's a sin, but I'm smitten with him. I'm a shrink, not a priest. Can I kiss her at least? Who's to say what's wrong or right? Maybe young or frog will sight that the love so strong and true will make the best men do most anything. Most anything. Oh, listen, Alison, things can get misconstrued. If I cross the line, I could get my shit get sued. You must tell your friends and colleagues that you heard these words. Because we can be together if I say. If you say. You're cured. I'm cured. You're cured. I'm cured. You're cured. I'm cured. Wait, I'm cured? What, what? You just said I'm cured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was easy. Thank you so much. I'm gonna recommend you to all my friends. But, 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 but wait, 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 please. Please don't. Uh, I, I thought we shared something real. Something good. What are you, some kind of perv? So ever since then, I've always had a little anxiety around butterflies. Uh-huh. And why do you think that is? I don't know. Um, maybe something from my childhood? Oh, your parents, maybe. <laughs> Probably. I mean, my mom never really let me go outside. And do you resent her for that? No, no, not at all. Uh, she was just looking out for me. Okay, let's talk more about your mother. Would you say she's nice? Yes. But you know, maybe a little controlling, possessive, overbearing, obnoxious. You think she's obnoxious, don't you? Mom! What? You said that if I came to you for counseling, you wouldn't make this weird. Jeremiah, I just wanted to get at the heart of your problems, which, you know, call me crazy. But they all seem to be centering around me. I'm coming to you because it's free. Oh, you need money. No, I don't need money. <laughs> Mom! Could we just not talk about our you know, relationship, please. Cherry Maya, as your therapist who has had years of training and changed hundreds of your dirty diapers... Oh, that's not relevant. Just do what I say, okay? Right, okay. Fine. Now, when your mother tells you that she cares about you, how does that make you feel? Good, I guess. That's good. But also a little manipulated. Manipulated? What? You think she has ulterior motives? I think she says things to get me to do what she wants. I think she says things because she knows what's best for you. I also think she's extremely passive aggressive. Passive aggressive? What? You're just going to say that right in front of me? Okay, fine. Uh, seriously, I can't talk to you. See, that right there. You started talking to me like that as soon as you started hanging out with that Ibanez girl. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I can't talk to you because you are always disappointed in me. What? Disappointed? No, I'm not disappointed in you, honey. Although, you know, leaving a steady job to become an actor didn't do you any favor. I mean, have you had any gigs yet? I don't think so, you know? This isn't helping. What are you saying? You want to stop seeing me? Please don't phrase it like that. My own son wants to stop seeing me. Mom, you're overreacting. <laughs> My own son, who I carried in the womb, developing gestational diabetes before I spent 96 hours burning him into this world, wants to see other people. <laughs> therapists, other therapists. If anybody can hear us through these walls. <laughs> Outside, Ibanez Vera. What is she doing here? She's my wife. Ready to go? Okay. Oh, wait, check me. I just wanted you to know that in all of my life, I have never tried to hurt you. Yes, you have. Well, not emotionally. Yes, you have. 
Well, not emotionally permanently. Yes, you have. Oh, oh. Wait, wait, wait. You have to forgive and forget, okay? I mean, you dropped out of college and married the Ibanez girl. Essentially throwing your life into ruin, but do I harbor any resentment towards you for making my grandbabies look like homely velociraptors? No! Goodbye, Mom. Hey, quick, Jeremy. Your father wants you to visit his office to get that mole removed off your ass. Mom! Hey! Don't shoot the messenger. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Well, Mrs. Campley, how have things been going since Tuesday? Well, actually, much better though. I feel that this session will help you tremendously. I think I'm beginning to overcome my feelings of hostility towards my in-laws. That's very good. You're making progress. Please, Mrs. Campley. Mrs. Campley, these cry fits are released, but they are hardly constructive during these sessions. I know that, Doc. I don't know why I keep having this fit. Well, perhaps you're having difficulty in relating to your in-laws. No, I don't think it's them. I really don't. <laughs> You've been coming here for seven weeks now and you don't seem to be getting to the core of what's really bothering you. I know that, Doc. That's why I'm here. I want to find out what it is myself. Mrs. Campley, oftentimes our emotional problems are not related to present stimuli, but these kinds of traumas are often related to the past. We can trace them to a former life or when you were a child, things that have. Has anything happened to you in your childhood? Some unfortunate experience? My childhood? Mm hmm. Well, there was this one incident. Ah. It happened when I was eight years old. Eight years old? Oh, 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 but it's silly. Oh, no, 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 nothing is silly. Please, go ahead. It's silly, it really is. It really didn't mean much. <laughs> These are two dollars a box, Mrs. Campley. Now look, Mrs. Kimberly, I'd like to understand this. I'm your doctor, I'm here to help you, and I want you to tell me all about it. Well, you know what, Doc? I think this is the most traumatic thing that's ever happened in my whole life. <laughs> well, go ahead. It happened when I was eight years old, and I had this pail that I love. Pail? Box when this fat kid came over and he took it away and he wouldn't give it back. Let me get this straight. Are you saying that the most traumatic thing that ever happened to you was this fat kid came over and took away your pail? I told you it was silly. No, no, no. I'm sure it hurt you very much. I'll never forget. He was such a fat bully, and he took away my pail, and he was fat, fat, fat! Well, no, Mrs. Kempley. You have to understand where he was at. You know, often overweight children have severe problems of their own, and oftentimes they try to compensate by unnecessary aggression. I, myself, was a chubby. Child. And he was me. Me! Not only he took my pain away, but he kicked it and he put the dent in it.
Was this pale blue with the clown on one side? Yes. Was there a picture of Minnie Mouse on the other side? Yes. What's your maiden name? Crenshaw. Susan Crenshaw. Cry baby Crenshaw? <laughs> well, well, well. That's so Huffman? Don't call me that. So it was you. You took away my pail. It was my pail. No, it wasn't. It was my favorite toy of all time. And you took it away, you kicked it, you put a dent in it. Now, now, if you remember, I didn't steal it. You sold me your pail. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yes, you did. I gave you six pieces of saltwater taffy for it. Oh, of course. Who else would love saltwater taffy but Fred the Huffman? I remember distinctly. You came over to me. And you said, Can I have some of your saltwater taffy? I'll give you my pail if you give me six pieces. No, I didn't, and I don't talk that way. Yes, you did, and you always had a stupid lift. No, I didn't, I don't like it. Oh, you, you waddled up to me with all of your fat stuff in your daddy's bathing suit, and you told me, you better give me that pail. Or I'm going to shame shame in your dead box. Boy, oh, we acting silly, Mrs. Kempley. <laughs> Have you forgotten we're adults now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was a long time ago, silly. Long time ago. Silly. All right. Let's see now. So you would then admit that perhaps your in-laws are a factor in these feelings of inadequacy. Well, we can safely assume that though. Oh, oh, you know something else? I think I discovered that I think I'm improving. You know I have that, that feeling of inferiority toward my sister-in-law. You know she's a rival for my husband's affection. But now I'm not feeling that anymore. Ah, there we go. That's very good. Very good. It was my pail! It was my pail! This is ridiculous. How can I continue taking therapy sessions with the very person who gave me my hang-ups? I don't believe that I gave you your hang-ups. How could I possibly give you any problems by the simple purchase of your pail? Theft, 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 so theft. And I want it back! It was over 20 years ago. I don't have your pail. If you don't give me back my pail, I'm going to report you to the AMA. Go right ahead. Who are they going to believe? A respected psychiatrist or a neurotic lifting crybaby? If you don't give me back my pail. Oh, yes? I'm going to go out there with a the room of 80,000 art patients and tell them how you got expelled from the third grade by drawing parts of teacher's anatomy in the bathroom wall. Here's your stupid pail. You... You gave it all these years? It meant a lot to me. Wait a minute. This isn't my pail. I know. It's mine. Why did the yellow handle? This pail belongs to Gloria and Morandante. Well then, I don't have your pail. Alright, you asked for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the best Hold it. thing! Perhaps this is your pail. This is Daisy document. My dad made him out!
be worse. Some people aren't the footwear. <laughs> Dr. Lee? Yes, come in. I'm just washing my hands. I'm Catherine Bigman, Calco Sarri referred me. Oh yeah, fear of being buried alive in a box. Yes, yes, that's me. Should I lay down? Oh no, 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 no. We don't do that anymore. Just have a seat. Now. Let me tell you a bit about our billing. I charge $5 for the first five minutes and absolutely nothing after that. How does it sound? That sounds great. Too good to be true, as a matter of fact. Well, I can almost guarantee you that our session will last a full five minutes. Now, we don't do any insurance billing, so you either have to pay in cash or by check. Wow. <laughs> okay. And I don't make change. <laughs> All right. And go! Go what? Tell me about the problems that you want to address. Oh, okay. Well, I have this fear of being buried alive in a box. I just... I started thinking being buried alive and I begin to panic. So, has anyone ever tried to bury you alive in a box? Mm, no, no. But truly, thinking about it does make my life horrible. I mean, I can't even go through tunnels or be in an elevator or in a house, anything boxy. So what you're saying is you're claustrophobic? Uh, yes, yes, that's it. All right, let's go, Catherine. I'm going to say two words to you right now and I want you to listen to them very, very carefully. Then I want you to take them out of the office with you and incorporate them into your everyday life. Should I write them down? If that makes you comfortable, but it's just two words. Most people can remember them. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Here they are. Stop it! I'm, I'm sorry. Stop it! Stop it? Yes. S T O P new word I T. So, so, what are you saying? You know, it's funny. I say two simple words and I cannot tell you the amount of people who say exactly the same thing you're saying. You know what? This is not Cantonese, Catherine. This is English. Stop it! So, I should just stop it? There you go. You don't want to go through life scared of being buried alive in a box, do you? Sounds frightening. It is. Then stop it! But I can't. It's been with me since no, childhood. No, 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 no. We don't go there. Just stop it. So I should just stop being afraid of being buried alive in a box? You got it. Good girl. No, it's only been three minutes, so that would be three dollars. But I only have five. I don't make change. So I guess I'll take the full five minutes. Fine. 
Well, what other problems that you want to address? I'm, I'm bulimic. I stick my finger down my throat. Stop it! What are you, a nun of some kind? Don't do that! But, but I'm compelled to. My mom used to call no, me. No, 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 no. We don't go there. But I've been having this dream. No, we don't go there either. But my horoscope We is definitely there. don't go there. Just stop it. What else? I have self-destructive relationships with men. Stop it! You want to be with a man, do you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then stop it! Don't be such a big baby. I, I wash my hands a lot. That's alright. It is? Yeah, I wash my hands all the time too. There are a lot of turns out there. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> I'm afraid to drive. Stop it! How are you gonna get around? Get in a car and drive, you cool. Stop it! You stop it! You stop it! You stop it! What is the problem? Catherine? I don't like this. I don't like this therapy at all. You're just telling me to stop it. And you don't like that? No, I don't. So what you're saying is you think we're moving too fast. Is that it? Yes. Yes, I do. All right. Let me give you 10 words that I think will clear everything up for you. So you might want to get a pad and a pencil for this one. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Here are the 10 words. Stop it or I'll bury you alive in a box. This is Amanda. And this is Brandon. Thanks for watching our show. We've got one more episode coming up. But first, stay tuned for the Trio My Animation Projects CGI Over Life. Oh, that's where they make people have superpowers. Mm -hmm. And the 201 class have a Trio One ADR project. Yeah, they replace all the sound of a scene in Hollywood movies. So keep watching IAF TV. <laughs>